50 years ago, on the 20th of July in 1969, NASA's famed Apollo 11 program enabled the first humans to walk upon the Earth's only moon, our moon. And since then, the work of astronauts has allowed the greater human race to encounter and discover space by going where I think none other have ventured before. They've helped us push the boundaries of human endeavor here on Earth as well. And this morning, we are so proud, so pleased to be joined by former NASA astronaut, real live, Astronaut Dr. Don Thomas, a veteran of, get the 692 space orbits of our Earth. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm espresso welcome wow. for Thank you. Dr. Thank you. Thomas. I, I'm buzzing just talking about what you do. How proud are you right now during this year, this year of commemorating something so special for us as a human species, something that unites every single one of us regardless of race, of creed, of, of, of nationality. How proud are you of you being know, an astronaut? Landing on the moon, uh, that historic step 50 years ago, it was watched around the world. And it, it was really a, an event that brought all, our whole planet together. You know, it didn't matter what country, what language, what religion, none of that mattered. It was another human being, an earthling, going to the moon and it was celebrated around the entire planet and and that that just makes me proud as a an american it makes me proud as an earthling like we sent somebody to the moon and successfully got them back we're going to do that to mars as well coming up so pretty soon it's, sooner it's than exciting. i think we thought was even a reality a few years ago things are speeding up exponentially at the moment no more in any other space does maths live. Living Maths is the NGO that has brought you out here. We know that maths lives in the work that you do as an engineer. It's lives at stake. It's the, the very nature of what you're doing relies on critical thought. Why is it so important for you to create that critical thinking, that love of science here in South Africa? You know, somebody asked me at a, at a school last night, uh, how do you know where to land? You know, and I said, well, it, it's all, it goes to maths. You know, somebody's got to calculate when do we fire that engine to slow our speed so that when we fall back to Earth, we have a runway right there for us. And, and, and there's so much behind the scenes work that you don't even see about. You hear about the astronauts, you see images of us, but that we have a huge team, tens of thousands of people that are supporting the program that make it all possible. And it starts with maths and, and sciences engineering work. Was it the love of that? that sparked this interest in you because for you to still be giving back in the way that you are, to feel indebted to your industry, to this craft, what was the spark that got you interested, that, that set you on a course to become an astronaut? Yeah, I was just six years old when the first American launched back in 1961. I watched that at my primary school. You know, I was a young boy just sitting on the floor and I watched that on a television and I said immediately, I want to do that. So that was my moment of inspiration, the spark for me. And that, that is such a powerful moment. I, I came from a rather poor family and it didn't matter. I had that dream and I was no, nobody was gonna stop me or get in my way. And that's what I hope we can do today. That's what I hope to be doing, working with Living Maths, um, that we can go out to schools and excite and inspire that next generation. I know how powerful that can be to excite somebody and get them on that track. I want to do what Dr. Thomas did. I, I want to go to go Mars. Mars. I want to do yeah. more than he did, you know. I think everything you say, I, I constantly get, get goosebumps because I, I can't escape the fact that you have seen our planet. I, I, the, it is an incredible <laughs> view. You know, you can see the images uh, from the astronauts, the, the, the photos we take, and they're beautiful. But when you see the Earth with your own eye, every astronaut has that first reaction the first time they go to the window. They look out and they go, oh! they just gasp. And you see our paper thin atmosphere. The sky is pitch black, a darker black color than I've ever seen. And you see more Devoid detail yeah. <laughs> and, and color variation than you can see in any picture. And to see the top of Mount Everest, to see all these sites around planet Earth that I'd seen in books as a young boy, I'm looking out the window and I see the Great Barrier Reef. Or I see Cape Town. You know, it's like, wow. I'm looking and seeing it with my own eyes. It's spectacular. Thank you so much for, for 
planting that seed here in South Africa. I know you see yourself as a global citizen, but I, I love the fact that you are here. And we, we put um, this out to our viewers to post some of their questions, and we had some pretty cool questions come through. Uh, this one coming from Kirsten um, Nagel, who is asking, how do you shower in space? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, we don't have a shower, we don't have a bathtub. Face cloth. We, we don't have a, a sink. So we have little bags with powdered soap. We can add hot water, mix up a bag of hot soapy water, and just give ourselves a sponge bath. We have a special shampoo for our hair that doesn't require any water. You just put shampoo in your hair, work up a lather. That's how dry shampoo was probably it's, invented. That, that is exactly <laughs> it. So it's very easy, and it's just a, a practical way to bathe in space. Uh, it's not as good as a nice hot shower. So I was gonna ask, it must feel pretty good when you get back down. When I come film, back, yeah. when I would land on my shuttle mission, I'd be in the shower just like, oh, and making <laughs> noise. You know, my wife would say, what's going on? And I said, I'm just loving being back on Earth again. Oh, man. So that actually leads into our next question. Demisa um, Lekwati asking, what happens to your body when you come back down to Earth? How long does it take to readjust? Is it something that you really physically feel when you're back in gravity? Yeah, it definitely. There's changes in your body. When you go to space, your muscles get weaker because you're not using your muscles at all up there in zero gravity. Your bones get weaker as well. We lose about 1% of our bone every month in space. Wow. So on a two-week shuttle mission, when I come back, you're, you're weak, you're a little dizzy when you get back, but after a week, you're back to normal. When you go up to the space station for six months, for example, it takes a while to get back. You know, maybe six months to get your muscle strength back to where you were, and maybe a few years to get your bone density back to where it was normally. So best believe there's going to be a, a home gym on that, that craft that they sent to Mars. Yeah. We'll be doing a lot of exercise. On the space station today, they exercise two to three hours a day. So that, that's what they'll be doing going to Mars as well. I think a lot of people, and I love the fact that this question is born out of a deeper thought process around agriculture around how we can survive in space and grow. But Franklin could see asking, do apples grow in space? Maybe you should take some up there. You know, we have not grown apples because you need a large area, right? <laughs> how do you like them apples? Tree. Yeah. Um, we have grown wheat from seed to seed. And when you can do that, when you can plant a seed, grow wheat, and end up and with seeds, it's sustainable. It. You can propagate that. You can go to Mars and do that. So we've grown lettuce, there, yeah. uh, lettuce on uh, the space station, wheat. A few small plants. It's hard to grow plants in space because you don't have a big open field, you don't have natural rain, you don't have natural lighting. It makes it a bit of a challenge, but we've shown, yeah, we, we can do that. We can grow plants, so um, we'll be able to go to Mars. And space as well. You can do it once, you can do it again. You can do it again. Um, I think you are, are planting that seed, excuse the pun, in a lot of South Africans <laughs> right now. It's awe-inspiring to know that you have experienced what you have, but even more so that you've taken it as a responsibility to come to South Africa, to go to India, to go across the, the globe and, and promote what you do and help to, to grow minds and perceptions. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, Honor to be here today. Man, awesome, unbelievable stuff. Hopefully that has inspired you to think about the world beyond our world.